Welcome aboard for the ride, everybody. It's time for another episode of the Scoop Podcast presented by PPG Paints. I'm your host, Josh Getzoff, and very excited today to bring you episode number 38 with a very special guest. He once was a Penguin. Now he's back with the organization. We're talking about former Penguins defenseman, two-time Stanley Cup champion, Trevor Daly, who just this past offseason announced his retirement from the National Hockey League after 16 years. He played those seasons with the Dallas Stars, the Chicago Blackhawks, of course, here in Pittsburgh with the Penguins, where he won a pair of cups and rounding out the last three seasons as a member of the Detroit Red Wings. But now he's back with Pittsburgh as a hockey operations advisor, and that's not even the least of it. He's also involved in the Hockey Diversity Alliance, looking to bring change on the race front to the game of hockey, both today and moving forward. So even though the on-ice career has wrapped up, the off-ice career figures to be very busy for Mr. Daly. Now, before we get to the interview, obviously this has been a weird time for everyone. You've had a lot more time on your hands and you've spent a lot of time at home this year. And me personally, well, I really focused on some home improvement projects. And up next for me is to repaint the space where we spend the most of our time. That of course being our family room. I'm picking up some of PPG's Manor Hall paint. That made it easy to do myself. And that's saying something. And I know it will last for years to come. So grab a gallon of your favorite color at your local PPG store. You can find more information at ppgpaints.com. Without further ado, let's turn our attention now to my conversation with Trevor Daly, now back with the Penguins, reflecting on an incredible 16-year career in episode 38 of the Scoop Podcast presented by PPG. Well, Dale's uh, 16 years, over 1,000 games, two Stanley Cups. I'm probably putting an understatement of the century out right now, but is that a career beyond your wildest dreams when you look back on it? Uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, obviously it was, um, you know, my dream to play in the NHL. Um, you know, could I have written, written it up the way it went? Uh, you know, who could? No one could do that. But, um, you know, uh, the, the memories, Josh, the... Um, the great times, you know, it, it, it was very special. I, I, I would not regret one second of it. It's interesting, too, because I feel like so often you hear about when, when guys finish their careers and they make that decision to, to move on away from playing the game. There's almost that aha moment that they have that they're, you know, maybe they, they, they lose the love of going to the rink every day or it feels more like a chore. Did you have that? Because it's been kind of a weird situation with how your last season ended up ending in the middle of, you know, of a pandemic and everything going on in the world. Yeah. You know, I think the the last two years for me have, have been um, kind of this, this day's been coming, um, you know, kind of trying to, to put that in perspective, obviously saying bye to the, to the game is, is something, you know, I've, I've, I've only known um, is, is, is to wake up and get ready to, to prepare for games. So, um, you know, um, over the last two years, I kind of, Felt like it was coming. It kind of prepared me for it. Um, you know, you, you mix that in with a family, two kids. Um, you know, it, it kind of uh, it helps that decision out a lot. You know, um, that that obviously comes into play. Uh, you know, the, the the most important part is is putting my family in a in a position where you know my kids could, could succeed, and, and that's what that's what we um, what the decision basically came down to was, you know, how could I make sure my kids are, are taken care of? And, you know, obviously the, the pandemic is what it is. It, um, it's not the way that I wanted things to happen, but, um, you know, things happen for a reason. And, um, you know, getting this opportunity to be here um, is a pretty good reason to, to move on and the, to see what um, the next chapter looks like. Well, you mentioned your family, obviously your immediate family there within the daily realm. And now, as you also said, part of the Penguins family. We're going to get to that a little later in the conversation. But before that, staying on the family theme, I want to go all the way back to Toronto, Ontario, 1983. You arrive in the world, your mom, Trudy, your dad, Trevor Sr., welcoming in Trevor Jr. Uh, what was that world like? The family, sports, who, what shaped you when you were a young boy in that Toronto area? Well, boy, that's, uh, you know, you go back and, you know, that's uh, obviously special times. Um, you know, my my mom was the primary care for, for me. Um, you know, my my uh, my dad was around, just not as much as my mom was. Um, so, 
um, you know, just having her raise me the the way she, um, you know, felt that what was what was right. Um, you know, uh, back then you didn't realize. I didn't think it was right back then, but now as, <laughs> as a dad, and, um, you know, going through the process as um, as as a parent, um, you know, I look back and if I could be half the parent that my mom was uh, for me, I think uh, I'll, I'll do a pretty good job. I know from what I've read as far as your upbringing, it seemed like you had a, quite a crowded house at times there uh, in your Toronto establishment. Your uncle, Donald Harris, I understand he lived with you. And I also read that he had an impact on your growth as a youth, but also maybe had something to do with you being in rollerblades a lot when you were little and flying around the Toronto area. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. I, I, um, well, my house that I grew up in, had, we had nine people in it. So it was a, it was a busy house, one bathroom too, Josh. Oh so man. It was, it was a busy, busy place. Um, but no, uh, uh, you know, Uncle Donald was actually, um, I shared a room with him. I slept on the floor <laughs> most of the time. Um, he, um, you know, he, he played hockey. Um, you know, I, I kind of idolized him and, and wanted to do everything he, he did, um, you know, uh, when I grew up. And, and um, definitely, um, you know, my biggest role model uh, for, you know, my career in my life was, was him, you know, um, just... You know, he, the, being a good, a good kid, he was kind of, you know, went, out, went along with, you know, being a good hockey player. And, you know, he grew up and, you know, he, uh, he weighed a lot on me. Um, not getting into trouble, not making terrible decisions, um, you know, making the right decisions. Being being a good boy, is, is, he, uh, he shaped me into to being. And, you know, I, I had, obviously, I, you know, I had um, a lot of support, you know, grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, you know, everybody kind of chipped in and kind of made an made opportunity for me to play hockey because, you know, it's, it's, it's a very expensive uh, sport to play. So, um, you know, resources was, was, was helpful um, with the supporting cast I had. And it all started with sleeping on the floor with your uncle in the bed. That's a, that's a tough sell there early on in the, uh, the childhood. <laughs> Maybe it teaches you some lessons, though, right? A lot of, yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't make any noise. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you mentioned playing some hockey when you were younger. Uh, obviously, and, you know, I've had the privilege growing up of playing against some guys that ended up going into the NHL. I knew that I was never going to that level. I had a feeling when I played against some of these kids that they were pretty good. But then you start to see as they develop that they're really good. I'm guessing you were probably one of those kind of kids in the Toronto area. Was there a moment when you were growing up and playing youth hockey that uh, maybe a team you were on, a tournament that you played in, or a level you played at when you kind of realized, hey, you know, I'm a good player, but this is something I could do as a career. I, I could really start to move forward with this. Yeah, Josh, there was a couple of different times. I was always um... – you know, I was always pretty good growing up. I was always a good player. I was never one of the, you know, the, the better players, the best player. You know, we, I grew up uh, with Jason Spezza, who was, you know, from the time we were, we were eight years old, he was always the best player. Um, and, and uh, had obviously, you know, the career that, that he had, he had and, and is continuing to have. Um, but I think the, the, the time when I, you know, felt like uh, something could really happen. I, I played junior as a uh, tier two junior long as a, a 15 year old um, the year before I got drafted to, to the two and um, we weren't a good team at all. We were actually really bad, but um, they got fun. You know, I was the youngest guy on the team. Um, I played probably 25, 30 minutes a night and, um, you know, it was obviously an opportunity for me to play with older guys and, and kind of prepare me for the next level. And, you know, when I did go into junior and, and the, the Greyhounds, you know, I, I felt that I was really prepared for that because, you know, having the opportunity the year before playing with 18, 19 year olds at the time, you know, helped, helped me prepare um, for when I did the OHL. And I, and I had a, a pretty decent um, OHL 
Yeah, a handful of years there with Sault Ste. Marie, and you mentioned your time there starting uh, at the turn of the century, not to date you or anything else, but 99-2000 when you first started playing uh, for Sault Ste. Marie, and then obviously uh, transformed there into the captain of the team at one point. Uh, what was that you know, experience like and your growth like playing in the OHL? You just talked about maybe the, the aspect of playing against men uh, as a younger guy in the beginning, but you were in that league for four years. I mean, you as a player also had the growth. And I think so often you hear about junior, especially, and maybe even defensemen, that opportunity to do a lot of what we saw you do at the NHL, become that puck moving, you know, very fluid skating defenseman that has that offensive side to his game. And uh, maybe I'm reaching here, but it feels like that that probably was a part in your career, that that aspect of your game really hit another level. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I um, you know, going in the junior, I, I uh, a lot of, um, you know, my my uh, my biggest asset was my skating. Um, you know, and um, with that team, with the Greyhounds, uh, you know, the coaching staff that we had there allowed me to to express that um, in my game, and you know, help help me grow um, that aspect of my game. Um, I had a great D coach there all four years, Steve Harrison. Who um you know who, who allowed me to, to to grow and, and help me, encourage me and, and gave, me, uh, gave me a lot of opportunities. So um you know the, just the, the the number of opportunities, the, the the type of opportunity I had, you know obviously um you know excelled me to, to to be able to to get drafted and and to become uh, you know an NHL hockey player. Yeah, you were drafted. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. 44th overall in 2002 by the Dallas Stars, your first and longest NHL home. But uh, before you wrapped up your time in Sault Ste. Marie, I'm guessing this probably wasn't the first instance that you had something difficult happen to you as far as your hockey career, either on the ice or off the ice is concerned. Uh, let's be honest, the sport of hockey, and I know we'll get to this a little bit later in the conversation, does have quite a, a white connotation to it. And I think for yourself, you know, growing up in Toronto, I know you, your uh, parents, you know, a white mother and an African-American father. Um, but at the same time, growing up, I'm sure there were some instances that you ran into as a young player and, and moving up through the ranks. And it kind of came to a head a bit there in Sault Ste. Marie when your your coach, John Van Beesbrook, used a racial slur towards you uh, in describing uh, his uh displeasure, I think, with a result you guys had that year to some of your teammates. Uh, can you kind of take us through what that experience was like for you? Because we talk a lot about the growth that you have as a player and maybe even as a leader in becoming the captain for the Greyhounds. But that has to be a different kind of mental growth that, you know, I got to be honest, I can't relate to that someone like yourself had to go through on top of becoming, you know, an elite hockey player. Yeah, you know, uh, and it to go back to it at the time it obviously it hurt it bothered me um it hurt my mom even more um you know now that i look back at at, at um what happened um you know the the regrets i have from then was you know it probably wasn't handled the right way back then um you know the way it it could have been handled today in today's world um, maybe if it was handled a little bit better, maybe, you know, there's some of the incidents that are still happening, maybe wouldn't happen today. And, and I think, you know, as a, as a dad and you know, as somebody that's a little bit older and more mature today and seeing how, how, the, how, um, how these things affect people uh, in a different way, um, you know, that's probably one of my most regrets is I wish that it was handled a little different Um you know, I, I wish uh, people like that didn't weren't given so many opportunities, and and they I don't want to say weren't given so many opportunities, but were punished in the right way. I don't I don't feel that um, the punishment fit what really happened, um, and I and I think um, you know maybe maybe if it was handled the right way, maybe you know. What happened to Akeem Alou would have never happened to Akeem Alou. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe what happened to Wayne Simmons would never happen to Wayne Simmons. Um, you know, maybe the, the the nine-year-old kid playing in the 
in the GTHL, you know, what I had to go through, what I had to go through. So um, that's what bothers me today, Josh. Um, that's why today I have a, I have a, a, a girl who loves hockey, who wants to be like his dad, and he looks like his dad. And um, as a dad, and where I'm at, I don't want him to ever go through what what we had to go through. Um, you know, you want to make the world a better place, and that's uh, my responsibility. So, um, you know, that, that, that's probably I don't want to get long winded by it, but um, that's what hurts today the most. No, that's I mean that's a thoughtful answer. I think that's that's true on on every account. And you mentioned kind of the repercussions after that. Uh, Van Beesbrook obviously resigned. He sold his stake in the Greyhounds. Still involved with hockey, as you mentioned, also though uh, very much so in in, in the current day. Um, and we'll get to the Hockey Diversity Alliance in a bit. You, you, I know you're very involved with that, an executive member in the inaugural group, uh, as far as the board is concerned. There, but I think it's also a testament to you that you were able to work through that. You came back to Sault Ste. Marie, you played a whole nother season with the Greyhounds, and then you realized your dream, and you got drafted, as you mentioned, to the Dallas Stars second round, 44th overall in the 2002 NHL entry draft. I tried, Dales. I, I looked through YouTube to find the video of when you got drafted. I always like to see if I can find the reaction, or maybe if you did an interview and see a young Trevor Daly in that moment. Again, I'm not trying to date you, but I couldn't find anything. Uh, but I know it happened because it's all documented out there. Uh, but what was that? What was that like? What was your your earliest memory when when you realized that you know you had been selected to the National Hockey League? It was on. It was one of the greatest things. It was actually in Toronto. Um, uh, the draft was in Toronto, so I had obviously I had a ton of uh, support there. Um, Willie O'Ree was actually there, so um, awesome. When I got drafted. I was one of the first people I got to 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 be congratulated by. It was Willie, um, great great person. Um, but yeah, it just uh, such a memorable time. Um, you know, I remember getting drafted, then going back to the house and and uh, you know having a backyard party with with friends, family. Um, just a, uh, a special, special moment. But um, you know, I look back on it, and that was like not even the start of it. You know, there was so much more to go into it, and and uh, you know, to get drafted is one thing, but there's so many guys that have gotten drafted and never even touched the ice. So. Right. And, I mean, that, that that was such a special moment. But, um, you know, now that you look back, it, it, <laughs> as special as it was, it, it was like a, a chip of the iceberg uh, to, to become an NHL hockey player. And I think a lot of that aspect of it being just, you know, the beginning and the first steps comes with the people that surround you once you get to that moment. And I know, you know, from talking to you when you first rejoined the Penguins, there were some people in particular in Dallas that that did make an impact on you as a young hockey player uh, and kind of growing your game at the NHL level. Just for the people that didn't hear that and and maybe to, to kind of recount it yourself, who were some of those people that, you know, when you were kind of a raw guy coming out of the OHL, jumping to the NHL. I know you played a little bit in the American League with Utah, but before you came to Dallas uh, and when you joined Dallas, who were some of those guys that really had that impact on you? Oh, man. Where to start, Josh? Um, there were so <laughs> many. Um, you know, I had some, uh, you know, great teammates. Um, you know, teammates are obviously your your lifeline. You know, um, you 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 weigh on them so much, especially when you come into the league um, as a young kid, you, you, you look up to, to these guys, the guys we had in Dallas, you know, the, the, the Sergei Zubas, the Mike Badanos, the Marty Turkles. Uh, you know, I had uh, Don Sweeney was my roommate. Uh, he, he, he was the same age as my mom. <laughs> I always love to tell people that, but um, uh, people like, like that just to look up to, but I, um, in the organization, I had uh, JJ McQueen, Les Jackson, um, who just uh, vouched for me all the time. Uh, you know, Les drafted me. JJ took me under his wing uh, and, and, and showed me the way um, how to be not only uh, um, a, a hockey player and to take care of myself, but to, to take care of my, my body off the ice to, to prepare to, to be a good pro. You know, I always heard uh, the, the words that came out of the big mouth, a good pro. Um, what is a good pro? And you know, I, I look at you know guys like Billy Garen, who we had in the picks, like Manny Mahaltra, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 
guys that were just great pros. Um, and, and, and those were guys I wanted to, to, you know, not, not just, you know, play as long as them, but I, I wanted to be, you know, character like they had, those were great character guys. Um, that's the, 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 the thing that I wanted to surround myself with was the character people. And we had so many of those in, 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 uh, in Dallas. Yeah, 11 seasons for you there. To, I mean, not just plant the roots, but grow into a very productive uh, and successful NHL player. So, I mean, really, when you look back on your 16 years, two-thirds of your career was played as a star. 756 regular season games played. You had 231 points. There was one deep playoff run that you were a part of during that time in Dallas, but a lot of good teams. And as you mentioned, some Hall of Fame players that you were able to skate with and play alongside and share dressing rooms with during your time down there as well. When you think about what it was like to be a Dallas star, this is a very open-ended question. So uh, feel free to go whatever direction you want. What, <laughs> what comes to mind as far as you know your time in Dallas and what it was like being a star? Oh my gosh, it was special. Um, Dallas obviously was going to hold a you know a special place in my heart. It's where I where I first started. I think for any anybody that started uh, in a spot and and played um, you know one place as long as I did, they're they're going to have a, a special place. Um, just the, the the people along the way, Josh, I, I got to meet there. Um, you know, not not just ar around the rink, but the people away from the rink that I got to meet. Some of uh, you know, my my wife and myself, uh, our best friends are, are still in Dallas. So we have, um, you know, we have some unbelievable ties still to Dallas. So, um, you know, I, I'll always have a have a, a special uh, spot in my heart for that city. Um, you know, I had some some amazing memories there. Um, like you said, some, some pretty cool runs there. Um, you know, the in in uh, Oh, eight the year you guys lost to, to Detroit. We played Detroit in the conference finals, and, and they were good. They deserved to win that year. They were really good. Um, so, no, it, 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 such great memories and, and, and great people. When, when I look back at, at, at my career, Josh, the, you know, the, the thing that stands out, you know, two Stanley Cups is, is special, a great career special. But the people you meet along the way, my gosh, it's um, – it's so cool. It's, it's it's amazing. I've been I've been so um, so blessed and so grateful to to have you know met such great people along my 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 journey. And that's that's really what stands out at the end of the day for me. And it was quite a journey for you in Dallas, as you mentioned. You know, a chance to play in the Western Conference Final, uh, eleven seasons as a star, and then in the summer of twenty fifteen, you start to experience what it's like to not play in one city for your entire NHL career moved uh, to the Chicago Blackhawks but a short stay with the Hawks just 29 games before you get moved to the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, in December you kind of really did walk into just a busy I mean with it being the holiday season and everything it's a busy time I'm sure for you trying to get your family to Pittsburgh it wasn't exactly the easiest thing either but I remember there was the annual visit to Children's Hospital at that time that the penguins always do and i ended up walking with you and your group that day and kind of introduced myself to you and I, I very clearly remember you looking out the window and as i'm talking to you right now it's snowing in pittsburgh and i'm pretty sure it was similar that day um and you kind of were like is this how the weather is here all the time i was like yeah like six seven months out of the year you, you walked right into like the middle of the sandwich as far as that's concerned but it did really work out for you here i think that's fair to say too yeah it, it wasn't too bad actually <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why, <laughs> why do you think it did, though? I mean, things really, it was pretty immediate, Dales. Like, when you came here, things clicked yeah, right away. It's like, yeah, it was, you know, for, for me, me, myself, you know, I, I was looking for a fresh start. I, you know, I thought I had a fresh start, uh, like we talked about coming out of, uh, um, into the summer going to Chicago. I, I thought, um, you know, when, when I did get the call, I had no trade. When I did get the call, um, from my agent asking me if I would, you know, if I was willing to do this. And my first thought w was, yes, absolutely. You know, I, I get to go to a team that won three cups in five years, like to try to win. That's, that was my, my, my mindset at the time. When I got to Chicago, I was more or less, oh boy, I might be out of the league if I don't play. You know, I, I just wasn't playing. I loved everything about Chicago. Chicago was, um, I, I, it's, 
Chicago is an amazing city. Yeah. Um, the team was great. Um, you know, I, I remember saying I, I loved everything about Chicago until the puck dropped because then I did that. Um, so it, 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 it was, um, you know, it, it was a, a tough situation, um, you know, leaving there. But I remember, you know, um, talking to my agent and coming into Detroit, and, you know, or coming into the Pittsburgh and it was just, an, um, you know, a fresh start. Um, and then when I got got to Pittsburgh, I felt it was like a fresh start for, for the whole organization, the whole team. Um, the family came in, uh, I think, two days before me. Um, and it, I think everybody just felt like it was a fresh start. And I think that kind of, um, you know, helped me personally just having, um, you know, 22 other guys feeling the same way I was feeling. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, for me, that's a big part that I, I took out of well. More success. That team was obviously special, and you know, having watched it kind of progress from the coaching move to the acquisitions like yourself and Justin Schultz and, and Carl Hagelin that came on board that year and really changed the dynamic of the team in, in a drastic way. Uh, and you were a big part of that, as as we said. You know, fifty three regular season games, you had twenty two points. We mentioned that team you were on with Dallas that went to the Western Conference Final. I remember this Penguins team really seeming like it was hitting that crescendo in March. You guys really started to surge. I think there was like a a Sunday night game against Washington that you you won big. I think you scored a big goal in that game. Um, and it just seemed like that there was something really special building. And I, I always hesitate to talk about that kind of stuff because one, I haven't played in the league. And two, it does sound a bit cliche. But could you guys kind of feel it? Could you, could you really sense that there was something building there? Yeah, absolutely. It's that's um, you know one thing I tell people all the time. You, with with that team, you, you just you, you kind of had that. I I, I don't want to use the word cocky because we were not cocky. Um, we had that like swag, that team swag that we just knew. You know, we we had if we were down by a goal, if we were down by two goals going in the third. Um, you know, we had the ability. We knew we could win games. I remember, you know, I remember Flower just being on a different planet. You know, he he was playing so well. Um, you know, Sid was was uh, he's, he's on a different planet all the time. I don't know what he's doing, but um, you know, Tanger was 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 just, you know, these guys, I remember these guys how good they were. I was like, you know, for it, it just boosts my confidence. Um um, you know, I'm, I'm not anywhere at their level, but it gave me that confidence to, to go out every night and just know that I can get this done as, you know, with these guys. And, and that's, you know, that's where all the success comes from is, you know, your, your, your best players being your best players, and then guys towing the rope up alongside of them. And, and you know, you, you were there, you, you seen the best players are the best players by far. And, and, and the rest of us, you know, we, we just try to keep up with those guys and, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, we all know how it ended in 2016, winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, for you, that run was interesting on a lot of levels. Um, you mentioned just the, the, the team and how special they were. You obviously suffered the ankle injury against Tampa Bay in the Eastern Conference Final, and, and that knocked you out for the remainder of the postseason. So you had to watch those last couple of hurdles not on the bench or on the ice. That, I'm sure, was hard. And then, obviously, your mother, Trudy, who we've talked about already, uh, made such a big impact on you, was battling cancer in that time. So how are you kind of you know, weighing the off-ice challenges uh, and the on-ice you know, battle that your teammates were going through? When in a weird way, you couldn't really be a part of either, you know, physically. You were there, I'm sure, for for both emotionally and, and, and all everything support-wise, but you couldn't make an impact physically on either front at that point. Yeah, no, it, it, you know, I, I, I go back to it and, you know, um, having, you know, uh, I'll fast forward ahead a little bit, having being able to the very next year. Um, yeah be there and, and do it kind right. of made, um the year before even more special um in 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 so many crazy different ways um you know yes it was awful you know to to break your ankle i thought my game was 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 just it, it was i think the best i've ever 
been at, you know, and the opportunity that I was getting was amazing. Um, you know, injuries are part of it, but, um, you know, uh, Sully and Jim uh, throughout that, that run, I, in between series, I was, you know, racing home to go see my mom. They were fully aware of what was happening. Um, and then when I broke my ankle, um, you know, it, 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 I was, you know, devastated. Um, but now that I look back at it, I got to spend more time with my mom. And I, and I still got to, you know, um, be a part of a team that won the Stanley Cup. And, you know, the, like I fast forwarded, um, when I look back at it today, um, I got the best of both worlds. So I honestly, I, I, I have no regrets from it at all, Josh. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, you know, with how you mentioned it playing out the second year that, you know, what a special time uh, and, and obviously a crazy couple of years for you. That cup win in San Jose, when you guys did win for the first time, um, you're the first guy to get the cup. And I personally, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever really heard the story or if you're willing to share it as far as how Sid kind of came to that conclusion and, and what that conversation or if there even was one with you was like i mean we i know you you and uh, the other guys that were jumped into uniform came on the ice after the game was clinched uh did you find out at that moment had he kind of hinted to you prior to that we know how superstitious he is so i'd be shocked if he talked to you before the game about it but what no, happened? i had no no ideal until um you know until that kind of right before that moment i think cooney came up to me and he's like you're first and i'm like i'm Great game, Cooney. I love like trying to give him hugs and kisses, and you know, <laughs> like this is unbelievable. Like so happy. He's like no, and he's kind of dragging me around. Like you're first, uh, you're getting it next, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like just not even, you know. I'm trying to congratulate everybody and and uh, you know um, thank everybody, um, and uh, you know Cooney's just you know let's go, you're next, and I'm like, and it just. I, I was just in shock, like, um, you know, and, you know, they, they show these videos of guys, you know, what's it like when in the same period, there's no words, you know, like, you, and I, I don't know, like, uh, he, he came up, he gave it to me, and I just, like, I just wanted to hug him, like, you know, like, I couldn't believe it, so, um, obviously one of the most special um, my moments I'm ever going to have, and, you know, when I'm looking back at it, so far, for it, for it, for it, for it, for it. You know, uh, you guys know Sid. It's, that's that's cool. That's. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised. Sid's, Sid's one of the. He's, he's as good as a person as he is a player, which is hard to believe. Um, and so, I'm, I'm I'm just grateful for it. Incredible ambassador for the game, and that's good. I mean, I, I wasn't sure how that all played out. I remember being because I had done our walk off interview for the radio network with Patrick Hornquist, who was. I mean, could barely even stand up at that point. And I remember him hearing, overhearing that you were getting the cup first and going nuts about it. And then watching that happen was, was pretty cool. Um, I also heard that there was an attempt to try to FaceTime your mom when you got the cup. Did that end up happening? Uh, were you able to, you know, talk to her at all that night? Yes, I, I did. I did right after. Yes. Yes, I did get to, but she did get to, um, she did get to see it though. She was watching it from the hospital. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, that obviously, you know, was it was a crowning moment in your hockey career, one that she had such an impact on you getting to that point. And I know not too long after that, I think about a week later, unfortunately, she did pass away. Um, so you roll into that summer and you get your day with the cup. Um, I'm sure a ton of emotion and everything. W what'd you do with it that summer? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a very, um, you know, roller coaster, uh, just a roller coaster year. You, you had your biggest highs of highs, and then you got your, uh, you know, your biggest lows of lows. So, um, very much a roller coaster. But, you know, my, um, you know, my, my mom was sick for a while. Um, you know, so, um, you know, you're, you're not, you're never prepared for, you know, losing, a, losing anybody. You're never prepared. Um, but, um, you know, I, just to know that she was not going to suffer anymore, that she was going to a better place, obviously. Um, you know, uh, made things uh, in perspective a little bit. But, you know, I tried to, with the cup, I, I tried to, to share it with uh, as many people as I could. Um, I had it at my lake house up in Chicago. And then uh, um, this, the very next day, I actually got it for 
uh, a little over a day and a half, and I uh, I flew it to Toronto, and I and I had a big party in Toronto for my family in Toronto and friends in Toronto, and and I just tried to share it with as many people. As I could. That's awesome, and, and obviously got an opportunity to do it again in 2017. We talked about that and how special that was for you going back to back and being able to be a part of it on the ice this time as you guys topped the Nashville Predators. That was a crazy run in itself. Uh, and then after those two cups in Pittsburgh, you go to Detroit. Uh, three-year deal as a free agent. That would be obviously, as we talked about in the beginning of the conversation, where you ended your career. And in a way, I'm curious for your thoughts on this. The the, the full circle moment for you where you, you came into the NHL in Dallas is obviously, you know, a, a young kid coming out of the OHL and looking for those veterans and those, you know, voices and mentors to guide your way. And then you go to Detroit, a team that, you know, is coming off a historic playoff run streak. And then obviously was in a bit of a rebuild after that and, and bringing in some young players, trying to get them on the right footing. How much did you embrace that, that kind of role reversal that I'm sure your time with the Penguins helped added to as far as, you know, the experiences you gained here, the cups that you won, but then taking on that leadership role in stepping into the dressing room in Detroit. Yeah, no, it, it was, uh, you know, it was, I, I wanted to really embrace it. I, I really did. Um, you know, injuries kind of uh, limited that for me. Sure. Um, where I didn't get to, you know, I didn't get to embrace it as much as, as I know that I could have. Um, and that I wanted to, um, you know, the, we, the, that organization is obviously um, speaks for itself. You know, they've had some great runs. They're they're a first class organization. Um, you know, um, I have a ton of respect for that organization. You know, you know the time in going in it uh, mixed with my injuries, um, you know, it 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 leaves a little bit of a, a salty taste in my mouth uh, because of it. But it's part of it. You know, I I, I um, the the relationships that I made there and. And the people that I met there, um, you know, it's, it's, they're uh, talking to people, great people. So, um, you know, zero regrets for 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 that end. But um, you know, that uh, I've been so fortunate to play with you know four amazing organizations, um, all you know, all hold special places. Um, and, and Detroit was. And then, obviously, as your career wrapped up, we mentioned 16 years uh, finishing up in Detroit at the end of that three-year deal. Uh, a lot is is ahead of you, and I don't want to take up the entire rest of the NHL offseason in talking to you uh, to, to get on everything, but I do want to get your thoughts on a couple things before we, uh, you know, wrap things up here. One of them being the Hockey Diversity Alliance, which, you know, came into uh, play, I guess, and came into existence as the NHL was returning to play, uh, we remember the, the very passionate and and spot on speech that Matt Dumba gave uh, prior to the, the restart, I guess, of the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs and the bubbles. Uh, you are very involved in that, uh, you know, an inaugural executive board member. What was that whole process like to, to develop the Hockey Diversity Alliance? And I guess the big question is, what kind of a difference do you and your colleagues hope to make, you know, in the grand scheme of things with that alliance? Yeah, there's 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 so much that going that goes into that um uh, that that whole statement there. There's a, there's a lot. Uh, first, um, you know how, how that 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 started. Um, you know that's that conversation started um, back when when Akeem Alou um, story came came out on uh, on uh, what 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 was that. Um, the story that he, he that came out there, I forget what the news. Um, oh, was it Sportsnet? It was in Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. one of them was yeah. in Canada. Yeah, um, that that's when that whole thing started. I've known Akeem Alou back um, from when he was a kid. Um, hmm. You know, Akeem Alou threw out some incidents um, along his route. He reached out to me in, in support, um, and I remember getting that call from him um, uh, this last time. And um, you know, after reading his story and and him reaching out to me in prior occasions before that, um, you know, it, it, it kind of set something off with me. Um, you know, back then when he did reach out, you know, I was I was early in my career. Um, you know, get caught up in, in a lot of things, and you know, you're just not. I wasn't prepared for it. You know, I wasn't prepared for his calls. I wasn't ready for it. Um, this last time he called me, I was ready. I, I wanted to help. 
Um, and, you know, somebody comes to me and asks me, um, you know, how do we make the game more accessible, um, better for kids, um, you know, more um, in better ways where, you know, like I said earlier, that, you know, um, things don't happen to them, that happen to us. Um, how do we, how do we come about that? And to start the HDA, that's all it was. Um, it was eight of us on 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 Zooms, um, just like this, um, talking about our experiences, what we went through as as kids. You know, we all looked alike. We we're, we're all the same color. We all dealt with the same things. Our moms and dads said the same things to us. It was so organic that it was. Um, you know, it was just special. It really was special. Um, and then we, we felt that, you know, this is, this is, this has to happen. We, we got to, you know, we, we got to be a voice. We got to speak. We got to, you know, see how we could help um, young hockey players uh, become better. That's how it started. Um, now it's growing even more, just in light of, not like in, in the recent accidents that uh, have unfortunate accidents that have, uh, acts that have happened over the past um, few months, um, you know, it, it, it's 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 come to light obviously even more. Um, you know, that conversation, uh, which you know is, is where you need to start with all this, is is a conversation. Is, is I think the the healthy um, um, start to it. Um, but you know, my involvement with them, like I'm not a day to day guy with. with them. I'm uh, more of an advocate, a supporter. Um, I love what they're doing. I love, um, I love the fact that you know, they're willing to, to, to go to the force and the, to fight for, you know, what, what's right and what's wrong. And at the end of the day, when I, you know, I look back at, at my experiences that I had um, growing up as, you know, an African-American half-black hockey player, um, you know, I... I always question, like, what does that matter? Like, why does it matter? You know, why do I have to tell my son that, you know, because he's a different color, he's different? And, and that's kind of what what I go back to is why do you have to do that? Why does anybody have to do that? It doesn't matter. I, I put on the same skates you put on, you know? So um, that's basically my involvement. And, and you know, if I could be a voice or somehow use this um, to help combat that, then um, you know, where, where do I sign up? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's a great, you know, alliance, as we mentioned, and has a great message. I think in the months that have followed you guys creating that, it certainly has gotten out there more in the mainstream. I know we with the Penguins are doing a lot more, uh, you know, interaction and conversation and understanding and learning, which I have to be honest is something that I've tried to do more of because I'll, I will say I was probably guilty of not doing enough of it uh, prior to this stuff. And that's on me as it is many other people. Um, but do you feel that that message obviously is something that has to continue to be communicated and that book is very much open now as far as, you know, this conversation. But do you feel it's being heard? Do you feel it's starting to, to, to resonate a bit more? I, I mean, you know, I, I think it is. Um, I, I, I want to, you know, I want to have hope that it's going to continue, um, you know, with with these things that, you know, they're, they're, they're a topic today and then forgotten about tomorrow. Um, and that's kind of been, been the issue. And, and it's, it's not just... You know, it's it's with everything. You know, sure. we're, we're kind of we're we're in the you know the times we're living in right now. It's kind of um, you know it really sucks the times we're living in right now. With you know obviously we're in a pandemic, which which is terrible. But it's giving people a chance to just kind of sit at home, and kind of reflect, and kind of you know where what what is going on in the world. And a lot of people you know haven't had time to do that, and a lot of good people probably haven't had time to do that. And, and now they're they're seeing it. Now they're you know they're paying a little bit of attention to it, so that's what gives me um, a little bit of um, uh, confidence that this is gonna, you know, this is gonna last. This is gonna make things better, and and uh, hopefully this conversation, you know, never ends and it it, it stays open. And you know, if, there's, if there was a playbook for it, um, you know, for how to how to do this, trust me, it would have been done a long time ago. Right. So, you know, we just got to keep this conversation going. And, and at the end of the day, it comes down to what's right and what's wrong. At the end of the day, what is right and what is wrong. And, um, you know, sometimes it's it's harder to to <laughs> explain what's right and what's wrong. But um, for me, it's, that's what it comes down to.
And it would be interesting to see, you know, an opportunity for that message within the Hockey Diversity Alliance to continue, uh, not just today, but as you said, uh, in the future, many years to come and and hopefully just continue to be a persistent message that is, you know, understood and and hopefully reached uh, to a lot of people over the years and months ahead. Uh, opportunity for you also in Pittsburgh, now in your new role, as we really start to get to the end of this conversation, uh, joining the Penguins in late October as a hockey operations advisor. Uh, what was that process like? I mean, we talked about, you know, the moment that you decided you wanted to retire from the game of hockey. I assume that the thought in your mind was that you were retiring from playing. You weren't stepping away from the game, and that's evidence to the fact that you joined the Penguins. So what was it like, you know, realizing that this was something you wanted to pursue? It was actually really good. <laughs> I was, uh, I know it was exciting. I, I really was excited in so many different ways. Um, you know, I had a, I, um, I was, you know, preparing like I prepared any other year to, to, to play. Um, that kind of where, 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 where my head was at um, to start with. And as this, as this went on, I, I kind of started, you know, what would it look like to not play? You know, what, what, what do we want to do? And then, you know, with talks with the family and, and trying to figure out, you know, is it, to play one more year or to, you know, what, what what's this going to look like? And um, when Jim reached out to me uh, about this opportunity, it, it made everything, you know, so much easier. Um, you know, the opportunity to come back to the group, um, to, to, to be with such a good organization, um, to work under um, a Hall of Famer, um, you know, a guy that I have a ton of respect for, um, you know, just made things so much easier. Uh, um, made things so easy for me and made made the decision real easy. Um, and my family, uh, when I, when I it was funny when I told my family that we're going to go back to Pittsburgh, you know, it was so pumped and so happy, you know, they forgot that that I was retiring. And I was like, but daddy's retiring. Aren't you guys mad? They were just so happy. So that kind of made it a lot easier too, Josh, uh, knowing how happy the, the kids were to come back, come back here. And then, um, you know, the, the opportunity with the, the people that are here, I've been working with, uh, with Patrick, you know, the, 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 the sense of being beside he's been, Eric's been amazing. You know, we, we just got a great staff. We got a uh, great bunch of people. Um, you know, David Morehouse was was big in me coming back. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of conversations with, with David. Um, you know, so it just, it just felt, uh, it felt right. It felt, uh, felt like, like uh, I was doing the right thing, I was making the right decision, and and uh, I was I was excited. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Um, I'm looking forward to learning, um, you know, what 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 goes into the side, what 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 it looks like, um, and and uh, the the best thing about it is the people I get to learn from. You know, the, the people here, are amazing. You know, the atmosphere, the the. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a great, great environment. Well, I think I speak on behalf of a lot of people and maybe everyone within the Penguins organization. We say we're very excited uh, to have you back. Can't wait to see the mark you make on this new role. Uh, and, you know, before the, you officially transition, I know you have joined the Penguins and you are on board. Again, congrats on 16 uh, NHL seasons, a pair of Stanley Cups, a lot of memories. I know a couple in particular in there that you and the Penguins fans listening and watching to this will never forget. So, Dales, welcome back, uh, and congrats on an incredible NHL career. Thanks for doing this. Josh, thank you. So, so happy to be back, and thank you so much. A lot of ground covered there by Trevor Daly, just an exceptional 16-year career and a guy that, you know, as you've heard now, and I'm sure you were familiar with some of the aspects of his life story, but – there were many layers to Trevor's career, both on and off the ice, and lots of obstacles that he had to overcome. And it's interesting now to see him putting his best foot forward in his post-playing days, a time where he even said there towards the end of the interview that he feels mo more comfortable in doing that and helping younger players you know, to hear their voices, have their voices be heard, and make an impact moving forward on the game of hockey. He's certainly going to continue to make an impact here in Pittsburgh as a hockey operations advisor with the Penguins, and we're looking forward to seeing him make his mark with the Pens. Also want to remind everyone out there that when it comes to this podcast, we're very happy to have the sponsor of PPG Paints. And not only has PPG been a hometown Pittsburgh brand for over 100 years, they have the most durable products on the market. That's right. They make home paint jobs easy to do yourself and offer the highest quality of everything. 
from indoor paint to outdoor deck stains. Stop pushing off those home projects. What else are you doing right now? Visit ppgpaints.com to get started today. Big thanks to Trevor Daly for joining us on this episode number 38 of the Scoop Podcast. And a big thanks to all of you for lending us your eyes and ears as we went down memory lane with Dales. A reminder to everyone out there, if you follow this podcast, if you listen to this podcast, do us a favor, subscribe to it. We're available on Google Play, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, all over the place. Hit those follow buttons. The episodes as they are available will load right up in your uh, listening device and you'll be able to tune into each and every episode on demand here as far as the Scoop podcast is concerned. A lot more coming your way. Hopefully some news on the hockey front in the next time that we talk and the NHL can return to play and we can get going with that 2020-2021 season, which we know Trevor Daly will be watching from a very, very perched position to see his new Penguins in action just like the rest of us. Thanks again to everyone out there for tuning in. This has been the Scoop Podcast presented by PPG. I'm Josh Getzoff. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye.